Uh, how many of you have a cell phone with you? It would be great if you would get your cell phone out and call somebody that you think would benefit from hearing what you are about to hear. And I'm not saying that just to say it. I think that it is imperative that what I'm about to share with you is heard by more ears. Matter of fact, it is so imperative. I'm going to try to enlist somebody to be my video recorder. And the reason why is because I try to obey God as best as I can. And when I was sitting there, the Lord says, make sure this is recorded and put out. Is that video recording? Betcha. Could one of you brothers video this? I'm going to put this on YouTube as soon as I get home. Because I know that God is smarter than me. It's already videoing. God is smarter than me, and he knows why he said to do what he instructed me to do by recording this here. Uh, my name is John Brennan. Uh, I was made named John Brennan before I was ordained a bishop. And so I, I try to let people know that I don't walk in a title. I try to be as much of a servant of God and to God's people as best as I can, which is the opposite of a lot of my bishop counterparts. <laughs> they have a lot of people that slave for them, and that's not the way that it's supposed to be. Matter of fact, according to the word, he that is to be the greatest among you must be the least. And it is imperative that people know that the only one we should truly be serving is God and his people. Somebody can say amen. Amen. Because that's a true statement. It would be devastating for me as a leader to put the focus on me and not on God or the needs of his people. The whole purpose of God putting any of us in positions of authority is because he trusts us with that power. And I want to talk with you briefly tonight about the state of our nation. Uh, anybody know what the state of our nation is? It's dismal. It's dismal. dismal. Yeah, I think that's being kind of, kind of nice. <laughs> kind of nice saying that the state of our nation is dismal right now. Uh, there is no other nation on the face of this earth as blessed as America outside of Israel. And there are three reasons. First is because we love God's people. Two, we honored God's people. And third, we supported his people. And because of the promise that God made to Abraham, he said, I will bless those that bless you and I will curse those that curse you. America had been, you notice how I changed that, had been a blessed nation. Uh, a 26 year veteran. I did 26 years in the Army. I've traveled the world and I remember early in my career people would become afraid if they knew that an American was sitting or standing next to them. Today they look for one of us to hurt us, to cause pain to us, to inflict chaos upon us. Why? Because they want to, they want to be able to use it to thumb, as a methodology of thumbing their nose at us as a nation. So why did that happen? It did not happen just because President Obama became the president. It didn't happen just because of that. It happened because we started putting more focus on our riches and less focus on the needy. We started putting more focus on how much we can gain instead of how much we can do with what we have gained. We started putting more focus on who we could hurt instead of who we could help. There is, no other, there is no more charitable nation in the world than America. Don't get me wrong by that. The hearts of Americans are beautiful on how they would give quickly. But the Bible says if you give only to those who can give back to you, you've already gotten your reward. We need to be able to give to someone who doesn't even have the capability to give back. That's the one that's in need. And I, I want to share with you that the state of our nation is as bad as it is right now because we, as the Christians, hmm, have gotten silent. That's right. Amen. Is that safe to say? Yes. 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 Hmm. A little over six years ago, 
within the third month of his first term of president, President Obama declared not only here in America, but also in Turkey, that America is no longer considered a Christian nation. So let's give that the litmus test. <laughs> the term Christian is Christ-like. Are we Christ-like? There is a remnant. I hear that. Yeah. I hear that we try to be. I hear yes we are. And I heard someone honestly say, no, we're not. And, and that's the truth of the matter is. I tell people I'm trying to be Christian. I'm trying to be Christ-like. And the reason why is because I know I don't love like Christ loved. I know I don't give the way Christ gave. I know I don't do the way Christ does. But I'm trying. And I, and, I would, and I would go after the one and say, come on, beat me getting there. Because I feel that if more of us truly try to be, embody, be the embodiment of what Christ is, I think we would be a much different nation. So a little over seven years ago, 80% of America professed to be Christian. Let's give it the litmus test. What was going on a little over eight years ago? A teen suicide was skyrocketing. Abortions, skyrocketing. Divorce, skyrocketing. Do I need to go on? It's because we did according to Revelations, we left our first love. We became more important, more concerned about what I can get for me, what I can do for mine, than doing for a total stranger. And Christ did for total strangers. And the reason why he did for total strangers is because that stranger was just as important as his brother James. Matter of fact, when they, they came to Jesus and said, Behold, thy, thy mother and thy sisters and thy brother, he said, he just kept on talking. And they said, Hey, your mother and your sisters. He, Jesus said, Who is my mother? Who is my brothers and who are my sisters? It is them that do the will of my father. And, 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 and I, I just want to share with you uh, that the word went out in 2 Kings by King Jehoshaphat said, is there a prophet in the land? Is there someone who can partition on our behalf to the Lord to see what the Lord has to say about not only what we are about to do, but what's going to be the outcome of what we do? And it went back and said, yeah, there is one by the name of Elisha. He was the one that poured hand, water over the hands of Elijah. And if any of you know anything about Elisha, he became the, uh, 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 the, the entourage. I said, no, not the entourage. He became the, the second Elijah, but doubly anointed. So he wasn't, he wasn't the second Elijah, the way he would say Elijah equally, because he asked for something that Elijah said he didn't even have to give. He said, but if you see me when I'm taken away, God will give it to you. And he has to have a double anointing of Elijah's spirit upon him. So, so my question is, where are the prophets in America? We have so many people that call themselves prophet this, apostle that, bishop this, pastor that. But why are we not hearing any words condemning our actions as not being loving people, as not being caring people? as becoming bitter people, not only towards our fellow man, but even towards our government. Don't get me wrong. Government has overstepped its bounds by a long shot. But we are encouraged by the word of God to pray for our leaders. And I believe with all of my heart that if we true professing Christians would truly begin to pray for our leaders, get on a fast. Anybody know what a fast is? Anybody know what a fast is? Truly turn down your plate and truly give devoted time towards God, our leadership has to change. Why do you say that? Because of what is declared in God's word, that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. What, what are you saying? I'm saying that the state of our nation has gotten the way that it is because some of us who have been placed in positions where we could change has taken the back seat waiting for somebody else to do the change. I think I just stepped on a toe or two there. I 
think that those of us who have been placed in the positions of authority, where you have the ability to encourage somebody to become a better you one day, we just decided that maybe somebody else will come along. I'll share something briefly with you about me. This is what society had to say about John Briner when John Briner was a ch young child growing up in Harlem, New York. He'll be a school dropout. He'll have a prison record. And he may live to see his 30th birthday. Why did my society have that to say about me? Because I was a young African-American man whose father was no longer in the house. But thank God, God had a better vision for me than man did. Amen. Not only did I graduate high school, I possess now two going on my third doctoral degree. Not only have I never been involved with troubles with the police, I'm called on by the court system to deal with people at different time frames. It's not because I'm all that in a bag of chips, but it's because I refuse to believe man's report on me. I believe that if, if we would speak life into people as much as we speak death into people, we could turn people around. When you, when you deal with young African-American men who are struggling and you look like you've never struggled a day in your life, it's going to be hard for them to hear you. I, I give you that. If you talk to a bunch of Hispanic men who look like they've been struggling for a long time to make ends meet and you look like you've never struggled a day in your life, it's going to be hard to get them to get total attention to you. But it's when we, we, when we get to the place... When we get to the place where we truly become concerned about our fellow man, that when we see an injustice being done to somebody, anybody, something starts boiling inside of us. And that boil happens not because we are an American, but because we are a human. There should be a consternation anytime you see the type of police brutality that we're seeing being done. I'm not talking about just to African-American men. I'm talking about police brutality to anybody because we have put trust and confidence in you to protect us, not to turn around and beat us. And when our government fails to take care of the people with strong government, not by being a gimme nation, but by being a strong nation of strong leaders who live on the word of what they ran on, I find it hard to find one, one candidate today that has been successful, that has kept just one of their campaign promises. Well, the president did. He did. He said, I'm going to bring change. And he brought change. Uh, I, 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 I believe that there's a lot we can do as a nation to change a community which will impact a city and catapult into a state and force this nation to turn around. America is touching literally every continent on this earth. We have embassies there. We're touching every nation on this earth. So that means that we have the ability to influence every nation on this earth. But our influence is becoming more negative than positive. And it is because we, as America, have forgotten our God. 